was, and he's praying, his prayer is that God would cause these people in Thessalonica, that Paul was responsible for starting that church, to abound in love for one another. All right? Because this is what it's about. We're supposed to love one another. That's the commandment of God. The new commandment of Jesus Christ is what he said. But he goes on to say, and for all people. Now, this is really, really important. And I promise you, this is something that is really significant in this particular day and age. Of course, it was important then and significant then, but all the more now. Listen to what Jesus said here, right? This is from Luke chapter 6, verse 32. Jesus said, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. Then, in the Sermon on the Mount, all right, I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 43 to 48. Please listen to this. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax gatherers do the same. If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Therefore you are to be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We are not just to love, we are to love the, the brethren. Okay? And by the way, our love should go to them first. Okay? It goes to doing good goes to the household of God first. That's you'll find in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. And judgment comes to the household of, of God first. Find that in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 17. God sent the gospel to the Jew first, then the Gentile. You know, there's this order. God is a God of good order, right? So while, yes, it's supposed to go to our own household because love radiates outwards. So it, it goes out from those the closest to you, but it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Now here, listen to what I'm going to tell you. Your love doesn't, is not supposed to stop once it leaves the boundaries of your church and hits a Muslim or a Buddhist. But one of the things there's a problem with that we have. It's a purple grass problem. Because when you say love, immediately comes to mind is the emotions. Well, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. about a right. person. We're going to talk about that. That's, that is, you're absolutely right. That's the root of the problem that we have. Right. Is that we're being driven and, and moved by our feelings emotions. rather than by, and our emotions, by feelings and emotions rather than by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And that's what I want to talk about. You know, who are you supposed to love? Let me ask you this. Who are you not supposed to love? Exactly. Now, I don't think that there's anything in Scripture that demands you love the devil. Okay? Yeah. We're talking about human beings. B-E-A-N-S. Okay? Because our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Our warfare is against that adversary who rebelled against God irreversibly. Okay? But where is the love of a Christian supposed to stop? Well, then how do I see, just recently, for example, when Saddam, or not Saddam, uh, Osama bin Laden was killed. And by the way, I, I, I've got to get into this, so don't get too ahead of me here. When Osama bin Laden was killed, people were dancing in the streets in the West, celebrating them. USA! Times Square looked more like a party as hundreds took part in the celebration. Okay, I can't comment on that. Other than the fact, if you're a Christian and you were dancing in the streets, if your heart was leaping with joy, then you want to know something? Your heart is not right. It says do not rejoice when your enemy falls. It says in Proverbs, do not That's rejoice right. when your enemy falls. So, but the thing is, what is the heart of God the Father? The heart of God the Father is his desire, Peter wrote, is that none should perish, but all come to everlasting life. Let me tell you something. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died on the cross for Osama bin Laden. 
When he prayed a prayer and said, Father, forgive them, he was praying for Osama bin Laden. Oh, praise God, he was praying for me. Thank God he was praying for you. He was praying for all of us. But he was praying, it says that the, the first thing John the Baptist said was, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the nice people. No, he didn't say that. He said, okay, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the Jews. What John the Baptist said was, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. There is a place for people to deal with evildoers like Osama bin Laden. That is the God-given ministry of the government. It says that the governors have been given the sword to punish evildoers. That's their ministry. It's not our ministry. It is not the ministry of the church. The ministry of the church is reconciliation. The ministry of the church is that what we use as a tagline here at Bible Talk, that we proclaim the Word of God powered by the love of God. That's our ministry, to, to, to beg people, to plead with people to be reconciled to God the Father.